day traders from around the world. What's going on? It's me, Jeremy Alexander Newsom, with your Monday blood-filled, depressing, crashing market stock update. Hope you're doing phenomenal. It is going to be an interesting day if you are doing phenomenal because some did and some didn't. It just depends on how you position yourself for this move. This particular chart we're looking at right now is actually a 2006-2007 time frame on the SPY because what I'm trying to do is find some patterns for you all um, regarding what I think is probably happening right now. So this was a strong bull market uh, back in 2006, late 2007. And you guys, just a really, really quick flash bearish move, um, really February, March timeframe, and uh, after a strong previous year. And we kind of did that into the 100 simple and then we eventually end up making uh, a new all time high. And we all kind of have an idea of what that eventually ended up leading to. But uh, that, that, that is my theory for, for all those people who want the market to quote unquote, you know, crash or correct or the perma bears out there. I still think we're going to get another all time high. I really do. Very confident that'll happen. But today's sell off was glorious. It was magnificent. And there were a lot of warning signs. And congratulations to those who did it. Uh, it got a chance to make some money on the downside. There was a lot of traders. Um, I mean, we here's just to bring it up to forefront. So day trading, just this, I mean, since February, we're up seven and a half hours. <laughs> seven and a half, I mean, woo! So when you're talking about some, some bearish markets, this is why Day traders like volatility and they like bearish movements because they move just so flipping fast. A lot of volatility. Um, so here's, here we are on the SPY. And again, the whole thing started, and you know, go back to some of my reviews. Still don't think this is the top of the market, like for all time by any means, for a while at least. But there's your one black crow. That is it. That is a one black crow candle. And then you got a retest gap the very next day and we retested. This was the big warning signal right here. You had a tweezer bottom. Right, both of these candles had the exact same low, and that was a Thursday. So we talked about that in Transportation Thursday in the afternoon swing trading room. Um, so yeah, very, very nice tweezer bottom. The low of this bullish candle and the low of this bearish candle were the exact same. So we'll simply mention in that day, uh, that Thursday, traders asked about buying puts. And I said, if we close below the low of these two candles, absolutely. And then the very next day, I mean, it just, it gapped below, right? That's a, a bearish gap and go. I'm a classic gap. Look at me, no candles on the screen. I'm a classic gap. So incredible, incredible move. Now, the last two days really on the SPY have pretty much wiped out all of January and most of December uh, for the SPY movements. What a fantastic move this is. The ironic and crazy part for the, for the vast majority of traders who want a bearish pullback or bearish retracement, this is probably it. I think, I think this is it. This is probably what we're going to get. We're going to likely go a little bit lower, granted. Um, some of it will probably do something like this and chop around. And I, again, I think we're going to end up going higher from here. Uh, just kind of like that you know, previous chart that I was showing. But my thought at this particular point in time is going to be the... Uh, the next day tomorrow, we likely do gap down pretty massively. Uh, I don't know exactly how big, but right now we're already down half a percent pre-market. So we're probably going to gap down pre-market on the SPY tomorrow. Um, where we gap, that part I really do not know, but it will be a retest gap. Just like this morning when you had a black candle gapping down, right? Black candle gapping down. Uh, here's the five minute chart on the SPY. And the hilarious part is it did retest and then it rolled over brilliantly. Very, very pretty. So what I'm gonna be looking for on the SPY, uh, here's a 30 minute chart, and there's so many things to discuss, but I was looking for um, and kind of how to play this hammer approach right here. So here's your hammer on the 30 minute time frame uh, on the SPY. So that's a very, you know, that's one interesting signal. And then here's the hourly chart. Um, my overall plan on this one is likely gonna be around 260, Again, look to kind of go long. Depends on where we're going to be gapping tomorrow. I think we probably open uh, fairly decently low, potentially, and then again, a likely a bouncing opportunity. Now, there's a long way to go between now and where the market actually opens tomorrow. So for my futures traders, have an absolute blast. That's uh, going to be 
fun, 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 fun. Um, otherwise, I think, yeah, I think overall we're gonna be chopping around in this general zone, probably for the, the most of February. And then that'll be your area where you start considering, especially with the VIX being very far up there, um, some longer term bull put spreads out here in the 240, 230 area, because again, the VIX is really high. Um, strong pullback, we pull back right into the 100. Could we gap down tomorrow and just absolutely continue and more blood continue to be spilled for some of the uh, longer term traders? Again, absolutely, totally a possibility. But remember, there's nothing that can go straight up. I mean, this is literally comical uh, how high we went on the SPY. I mean, you just zoom out. <laughs> I mean, like, let me just let me just hide all my drawings for a second and uh, you know, look look at this. I mean, come on, giant giant bullish market for the last year year and a half. So yeah, this is a beautiful pullback. I'm glad you're, I'm glad it's happening. And now the figure, the biggest question is where do we stop and where do we end up bouncing and do we? Uh, or is this, is this it? Is this the highest that we ever go? And that's the whole market. Uh, and again, it's always possible, but most markets don't just stop with a V top. All right, this is what this would be. This would just be a V top, boom. Very, very few do that unless there's a news catalyst. And since we're not really at war, um, at least not, not that I'm aware of, not a World War III, uh, I don't think this, this, this high is gonna hold for long. I think we do go higher by the end of the year. So again, for my longer term traders, don't freak out too much buy some dips, figure out where you want to buy, go look for some value. Most of the traders in real life trading have been very, very primed and ready for this move. We're exciting it's happening. A lot of traders made some good money today, a lot of good money today uh, on this bearish move. So yeah, I'm excited to see what's going to happen from here on the SPY, but tomorrow I'm pretty much planning for that gap down uh, at open and then likely a bullish retest or fade from open. Uh, as traders will look to you know, buy some dips and lock in some bearish money. Any traders who bought puts over the last few days have been quite pleased with themselves. And man, oh man, it's going to be really interesting. So Friday in the afternoon swing trading room, I also discussed Apple um, and LRCX at length. So Apple, as you can tell, obviously also had a very strong bear movement today. Uh, but initially this morning actually opened at the 200. So here's the five minute chart on Apple. And when it got down this morning, um, this was the prime opportunity to get in. And uh, a lot of traders bought Apple right off the 200 and sold right around here for, again, a quick bullish day trade. And that's what we discussed on Friday afternoon, just gapping down into that 200. So if you did get a chance to buy off of the 200, congrats. A few more people looking at buying around this 155 area. Um, this is the hourly chart on Apple, and here's the daily. So strong level, definite uh, some bears getting really happy. Um, when, when some sell-offs do happen, they happen quick, they happen fast. Quick and fast, pretty much the same thing, right? A lot of volume coming in. The key in this movement and this market is to protect yourself, protect your capital, and have as much cash as you can when the thing slows down and kind of starts pausing and stops moving a little bit. That is the absolute key, is just to have as much cash and protect yourself as much as possible. So, you know, I'll, I'll try buying many dips on some things. Um, if it's long term, I want to make sure I have a really good support or really good moving average or something like that. For Apple, you guys know I just love it long term anyway. But off the 200, that was a good day trade opportunity for one and a half hours. Uh, a few traders are obviously going to be picking some up at 155, I'm sure, on Apple. But then from there, if it breaks there, which it looks like it probably will, um, next target on Apple is going to be, I think the 50 EMA is the next stopping ground, right? So that's the, the area that a lot of people are going to be buying it. And I don't think it's going to bounce off of that, obviously, perfectly. It probably comes down to maybe 149, 150, and then ends up bouncing. But yeah, Apple, sharp drops. Be looking for buying opportunities. Keep your eyes out there. And the, the cool part is if you're wrong, right? If you try to buy something, it's all about short term or long term. Time frame is gonna be very key for these trades. Remember and uh, know your time frame. If you're buying it and you wanna own this for four or five years, right? The next, if you buy some in the next four to five percent, it goes down a little bit lower, that four or five percent shouldn't matter if you're investing in it forever. If you wanna buy some shares long, long term. Uh, if you're doing it as a short term swing trade, absolutely have some stops. We actually got stopped out of XLNX today um, and it was a beautiful stop out. I feel very, very good about it, right? 69.49. You might have 
hit the desk or got a little bit upset at yourself getting stopped out of that particular swing trade. However, look how much worse it could have been. Feel free to keep your eyes on this trade tomorrow as well because it's a very good support. And again, if this thing gaps down, there will be some stocks that will have some good follow through tomorrow for sure. Uh, and there are some stocks that are still strong out there as well. But XLNX, that was a swing trade that we did get stopped out of. And again, very happy. I love stops. If it's a short term trade, if you're trying to pay bills with it, if it's a day trade or a swing trade, get in, have your stops in place. Hey, if it hits your stop, no big deal. I usually will try to buy a dip or be bullish uh, about four times on a trade before I just give up if it doesn't bounce. Right, so if I'm looking for a bouncing opportunity. So for example, let's go look at Bob and kind of give you an idea of how one could play this. So here's the 100 simple on Baba, which we trade to today. Um, so let's say, for example, you try buying Baba on a retest here and you lose, okay? So you lose an R, you try it here. And again, I don't know if we're gonna bounce here or not, but let's say we don't, right? You lose an R there and then the trade comes down to here. And let's say again, Baba trades all the way down to 163 and doesn't bounce from there. What do you do? Well, you lose another R and then I go try to find a fourth spot that I'll try to buy Baba. Uh, again, for a short term swing, if it comes down to here and doesn't bounce and I lose an R, uh, hopefully in those situations, I try to do my absolute best to move up a stop or something and lose less than an R, right? That's always the goal. Uh, on average, if I, I lose 0.7 Rs. So if I lose on four of those trades, uh, that would be 2.8 Rs I would lose on all four of those bouncing trades. So, you know, if some random thing happens and blah, 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 and does like this, and then I get in over here, get in bullish, the stock trades higher and I get out, and I make three Rs on one trade, I can be profitable if I take one trade profitably and make more than losing on four trades, right? So it's all about risk mitigation. Because as a bullish trader, you're going to be looking for dip buying opportunities. And when the markets are bearish, when the markets are making some quick sell offs, when people are profitly you know, taking their profit, which is exactly what's happening right now, you can either protect yourself by buying puts. If you're in the long game, right, on a particular stock, uh, most investors don't really use stop losses. If you're owning a stock for the next five to six years, two or three days shouldn't really matter to you. But you can buy puts to protect yourself and make a little bit of money on the downside and kind of keep your keep your wits about you, that kind of thing. So it'll be interesting to see, again, what Baba does because Baba at a really good support level uh, should be interesting. Here is a trade that we did in the uh, morning day trading room. Feel really good about it. CG and X, right? This is a black candle gapping down. So retest gap. And again, look at this support. Very, very clean support. Got a lower high right there. Uh, bearish retest gap. So here's the five minute chart on CGNX, and this is the one that we traded in the five minute trading room, or five minute, what? The day trading room, uh, real life trading. Here is the uh, retest, right? You got a gorgeous double top, and I didn't get a chance to see this one until right here. So as I was breaking this support, we got in with a stop up there, uh, and I did actually end up trailing out over here for 0.7R. So I would have loved to have held that whole move, but I guess I, trailed it a little too aggressively. However, there were some real life traders who did catch that and I gave them some frequent trader points because they just out traded me on that one. So, you know, it is what it is in that simple regards. Um, I think I mentioned LRCX earlier. Here's LRCX. And again, even though it's down four and a half percent, it feels weird because initially it opened right on the 200 simple. So the 200 simple is 174.28. So if you come over here to the five minute chart, the open of this is one, um, 175.42 in the low, 174.28. I mean, to the penny, it's right down to the 200 and bounce. And so again, this was good for another half, an hour and a half on land research. And then this just whole rollover happened later today. So the interesting thing about this sentiment is I was mentioning in the day trading room, there's really nothing else for this market to do uh, after that big bounce. Because when we gapped down, and I guess I'll just come back over to the spy and kind of talk about this. When we gapped down, we immediately got bought up. Um, so here's the five minute chart. So we gapped, it was a retest gap. We immediately faded. We filled the gap entirely. And I said, all right, well from here, there's only one of two things happen. We either roll over a little bit or we roll over a lot. Uh, because as it, as it gapped down, we trade up immediately filling the gap. So I was like, okay, where's it gonna go from there? I mean, the chances of it just doing this is possible, but it's slim, uh, especially with the gap action like this, very, very nice bearish gap and go right there on the SPY. So the chances of it really just crushing higher were very, very slim. 
since it faded so fast, it's like, what else is it gonna do? It's either gonna roll over a little bit and we're gonna get the doji like I was thinking, or uh, we're just gonna absolutely poop our pants and it looks like uh, number two is what happened. Here's the exponential moving averages. And again, we did trade down to the 50 and then we broke that and trade right down to the 100. So if you did buy some of these longer term dip moves on the SPY, right, into the 100, that's totally doable, that's fine, I get it. I think we're gonna chop around a little bit. We're not gonna bounce perfectly off the 100. We could go as low as the 200 for sure. I'm not questioning that at all. But I think, I don't, I don't see this as a V bottom in the market. The good news is, at least I feel like, uh, this is going to add some phenomenal volatility. So when and if we make that new high, this will be the part where a lot of people start hopping on. Uh, they feel, they'll feel well adjusted. They'll feel like they survived this crash. They'll feel like very, very comfortable at that point in the market. And then that's when things will get a little, a little interesting and hairy, um, to say the least. So we'll figure out if that's exactly what happens, but I will mention that this so far is following all of my models appropriately. Um, everything is okay. And could I just be flatly wrong? We V top from here and have a huge, huge pullback. Yes. And if I am wrong, guys, let's lose as small as we can and have as much cash as possible. Uh, because the absolute farthest I would imagine SPY pulls down to would be 210. Uh, that could happen this year. It would be the uh, only year ever that the S and P had gained more than five percent in January and did not end up on the year. So if history holds correct, right, in January you had over 5% gain on the S&P 500 and uh, it's either 12 or 12 or 13 out of 13 times we have finished higher with that being the case. So again, could we get just an absolute cataclysmic drop? Sure. Uh, and if we do, buy some puts, protect yourself, have some cash available. When that dip comes, I mean, what a phenomenal buying opportunity that would be. If something like this occurs on the SPY, and then we'll just look to go along from there. So protect yourself. You never know what the market's going to do. Mitigate your risk. And of course, learn how to day trade. I'll teach it to you for free. Doesn't really how doesn't matter how much money you have. If you have $3,000, you can day trade uh, through the hedge fund. If you have $25,000, you have $100,000. If you're retired, if you're in an IRA, you can go along on stuff. There's all kinds of opportunities out there, folks. I'll teach you how to day trade entirely for free. Seriously, come to my website, realtrain.com, click on day trading. This is an opportunity so good. Seven R's, ladies and gentlemen. Seven, that's 7% 7 ROI in days in a bearish market or a bearish pullback. I'm sorry, not a bearish market, a bearish pullback. Anyway, folks, you guys rock. I'm excited about this week. Let's do it. See you later. Bye.